that once the elections are over, it is incumbent, it is imperative that anyone who emerges as president must understand that elections are over and that once elections are over, the entire country unites again as your constituency and that you have a responsibility to govern well, to respect the component members of this federal of this of, of, of the country, to ensure that you obey the laws of this country. We have a federal character principle, we have our constitution that stipulates very clearly how our country should be run, how our diversity should be managed. So it doesn't really matter what happens, who wins or who does not win. These laws are in place. These laws were put in place by past leaders as, a very, as very important tools for the management of our diversity. And when we have trashed these laws, and when we have ignored these laws, simply because it is uh, convenient, we, can, we have seen the kind of disunity, how divided we have become, how ungovernable, literally speaking, our country has become because of our failure to respect each other, to respect our diversity, God, be pleased to elevate emerges should uh, uh, ethnic group presentation based on the federal character principle. This must be upheld. Otherwise, we might continue to have the kind of problems that we have in our quality. Our economy and other aspects of our national life. All right. Maybe experiencing some technical issues. All oh, right. So uh, now that you can hear me, now most analysts are concerned that election results uh, de now determined by the court, even primary elections. In your view, what can be done to reduce this? Mr. Frank, did you well, have? Okay. Um, uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yes. So I think I, you were asking what can be done to reduce what litigation. Yes, most analysts are concerned that election results are now determined by the court, even primary elections. What can be done to reduce this, in your view? Well, for me, I'm one of those that believe that the, um, the latest electoral reforms have gone a long way in restoring some form of sanity and order to our electoral process. And um, it's important for us to see these laws not an end in itself, but a means to an, I mean, you know, that a means to an end. Um, you know, every democracy will continue to evolve with, you know, based on the, you know, on 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 the um, on the emergent issue. So the electoral reforms have brought some sanity to our electoral process. I believe that if there are gaps, I'm confident that the uh, National Assembly, you know, um, the forthcoming National Assembly, will also take steps to to to, uh, to plug uh, those gaps uh, when they resume. You know, when they are convened in 2023. Um, I have no doubt that we're on the path of progress with respect to electoral reforms, and we must, you know, just be alert and then have the uh, openness to really um, identify issues that have not served, or laws that have not served us well, and then work assiduously to ensure that the, uh, we propose amendments that will actually bring, uh, you know, greater uh, improvement to the entire electoral process uh, for the benefit of our, of, uh, uh, of our country and our people. All right, so let's talk about INEC preparations for the election. How are you rated? How has it been so far? Well, I, I must confess that I, I have, I like a lot of people, I have my concerns, especially with respect to matters of uh, insecurity and incessant attacks on uh, INEC facilities. Um, but it's also heartwarming. I've heard the uh, chairman of INEC speak, and then, um, you know, he's been very confident in stating that elections will. will and that they are ready to ensure that Nigerians have credible elections in 2023. Uh, this is heartwarming, and then um, they have my best wishes. And I mean, as a uh, as a commission, uh, of course, as a citizen, nothing will please me more that these elections come and go without incident, and that we, uh, you know, bring that the political temperature will be reduced, and that we can show the world pride and confidence that we have the capacity manage our national affairs. Um, this is something that's really important to me. 
um, is also going to send a signal to uh, our friends internationally that our democracy is here to stay and that Nigeria is indeed uh, able and needs to manage its, uh, its, its own affairs. All right. In the past uh, few months, hoodlums continue to destroy INEC offices in the southeast. Don't you think this will have a negative impact on the election, especially in the southeast? Well, um, uh, again, you know, um, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. INEC has continued to uh, assure us that in spite of these uh, attacks, that um, they believe that elections go on and that they have no reason to think that the credibility of the elections will be uh, undermined uh, uh, in any way. And I'm going to hold on to that. They have responsibility. I believe that uh, they're working very uh, closely with the security uh, services, the security agencies. And um, I'm sure that um, these things will come to pass without the incident. Um, let's also not forget, uh, this is not the first time we're about to have national elections when, you know, a lot of people felt, oh, these elections might not go forward or that all hell will be let loose. Uh, but to the glory of God, uh, Nigeria has always navigated these elections, um, you know, uh, with, with, uh, in a very admirable way, in a way that uh, disappointed the uh, prophets, the sayers. And I'm confident that these 2023 elections will not be any uh, different uh, from past you know, That Nigeria will be able to manage it uh, effectively. Uh, partnership with the security uh, all right, Mr. Frank, well, these attacks have continued for some time now, and I'm sure you would agree with me that this is worrisome. So how best do you think this can be tackled for us to have a peaceful election? Well, uh, perhaps it's my turn to ask you a question, right? <laughs> maybe you have, maybe you know something that I do not know. Maybe it's my turn to ask you for a moment. <laughs> if there's something you'd like to sh you know, really share with our audience. But, um, Clearly, we have uh, agencies of state who have responsibility to uh, provide security. Um, we have INEC uh, who have responsibility to conduct elections. And uh, I'll, I'll be surprised if uh, our security services are not providing uh, maximum support to INEC. Um, I have no doubt, to, I have no reason to believe that uh, this is not the case. And uh, based on assurances by the security services, and of course, INEC at the highest levels of their management, I'm confident that these elections will proceed without an incident. Of course, we must continue to um, engage, um, you know, uh, the people who actually perpetrate some of these uh, acts of violence, track them down, and really bring them to, uh, to justice uh, as a deterrent uh, to others. And I believe that the security services are doing their best in this and will continue to do so. All right, on a final note, uh, let me have your final message for the people of Enugu State. No, say that again. Let me have your final message for the people of Enugu State. So thank you so much. And now to my dear people of Enugu State, I ask you to please arise. Arise and let us rebuild our city. Let us rebuild our state. This is my final message uh, to people of Enugu State. And I say, God bless you all. May God give us victory in the upcoming elections. Thank you very much, Mr. Frank Nweke Jr., for coming on Politics Tonight. He's the governorship candidate of Abga in Enugu State, and we analyzed the battle for the Southeast states in the 2023 elections and his governorship ambition. And we wish you the very best. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you.